Mark, when did you leave Stockton, California, where you grew up? Let's see, I left when I was 19 years old, and I was, it was 90, it was 90, 1990. And so I was actually, we moved my friend's sister down to San Diego, and we all drove down to like, you know, she was gonna to go to San Diego State. And so she had a summer class that she had to do at a community college. So we got her into her apartment, signed up at San Diego State, and then we went to junior college to sign up for the summer class. And while we were there, my friend and I were in line with her and like hundreds of people in Southern California signing up for classes, a lot of them in bikinis and shorts <laughs> and tan and sunglasses. We're like, God, it's so much nicer down here than in Stockton. So as we got closer and closer, we decided we were just gonna sign up. And so we signed up for classes, went around the corner, found an apartment, put down the deposit, and then we drove back to Stockton. And I came home and told my dad, so moving to, moving to San Diego. He just looked at me like, you're crazy. And I was like, yeah, and, you know, we just got an apartment, I told him the whole story. He's like, yeah, maybe you'll grow up then. And then like walked out of the room. I'm like, what do you mean? I I'm a grown up. You know, at the time I just thought like I knew more than he did, of course, at 19. And um, as I was getting closer to leaving, he reminded me that my car insurance is paid by him, which is no longer gonna be paid by him. And that, you know, I have to pay for gas. And then I had to, you know, all the things that I just taken for granted by, you know, living with him for so long. So, so yeah, and I, want, I moved to San Diego because I wanted to be close to LA. If I ever got a chance to like act or direct or something, at least I'd be close to LA. I wasn't actually moving to LA because that seemed too scary, but this was the perfect, safe way to get down here. Sure. And then he left and you turned up the Pearl Jam and yeah, exactly. <laughs> put, a, put on my, what are you talking my about? flannel shirt. Yeah, and just like, yeah. <laughs> so what was your life like at that time? So you're 19, so you're a year out of high school, I'm, I'm assuming. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, well, and you know, so my life was, I was turning one year sober at the time. So I basically had a very rough high school, post high school, uh, drug and alcohol addiction and had wrecked, you know, almost eight cars and, you know, pushed my family away. And so that last, that year from 18 to 19 was getting sober, building a life back, um, a relationship with my family again. And so that's why with my dad saying that comment was part of it because I was really like a 15 year old still, like just ment mentally. And um, so I was, I was just ready for a change and wanted to like take some bigger risks in my life because I'd basically just gone to meetings for a year and said I should just go down there and do that. And uh, so, yeah, so when I moved down to San Diego, it was, you know, it was a, a culture shock for one thing and, and also a, a great place for me to, to be going to meetings because there's a lot younger people in San Diego than there was in Stockton. Stockton, there was mostly you know, these old people like 30 and, uh, you know, and uh, in San Diego, there's much, a, a much younger group of people. So that sort of built a foundation for me to, to really work the program, which I really wasn't working in Stockton. I'm sort of like that young kid. And, um, and yeah, so my life, so moving down was a totally different, you know, what wasn't just like, oh yeah, everything's good. It was like, oh yeah, I'm like just trying to figure out how to be, part of society that's not, you know, causing problems. Sure. And well, forgive me if this is too personal, but were you afraid that maybe you'd be tempted just because, you know, Southern California is much different from Northern California in some parts and there's a lot of opportunity for many things. Definitely. <laughs> I mean, I naively thought I wasn't going to have a problem because I thought I was sober. Everything was fine. But once I got here, it was a different story. Once I got here, then I realized, wow, there's, you know, it's, it's a different world. There's more, it felt like there was more drinking in San Diego. There's more colleges, there's more, you know, beach town, different things like that. Um, when I got down, when I was on my 21st birthday, you know, I was like, I'm not, I should go to a bar. I should be able to like, be able to get ID'd and go to a bar. And, you know, and it was, I went with a friend sort of like, stupidly and you know went to the bar and was like looking around had a coke and i was like what am i doing here I'm like this is not a safe place for me to be um and so we left and you know i'm i'm still sober today it's just, great it's just coming up on 31 years this year wow so um so yeah it's you know it, it's it's been 
just life, you know, but, um, yeah, I feel like that, I feel like I was naively thinking, oh, it's going to be fine, but it has challenges. It definitely had this challenge. There was definitely feeling like, oh, wait a second. Maybe I'm just, it was just a phase I was going through, but I didn't have enough experience to know and went to enough meetings to know, no, my experience was different than other people that just had a couple beers. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So you felt safe in San Diego because the industry was like two hours away. Yes. But eventually you, you moved closer. Yeah, yeah, How yeah. did that happen? So uh, I was sort of uh, telling, I was a valet. I had like six jobs. I was like barista, grocery clerk, valet. Um, and uh, I was talking to you know a girl that was out smoking a cigarette like at the, <laughs> at the symphony hall selling tickets. And she was saying she was going to a rap party. I was like, oh yeah, who's the rapper? She's like, no, 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 a rap party for a movie that's being shot here. I was like, oh, cool. I was like, I've always wanted to be in movies and stuff and um, be an actor and director and stuff. She's like, oh, cool. <laughs> you know, I like walked away. And then uh, a couple of days later, uh, she came back, she was out smoking a cigarette and, you know, walked up, asked her how, you know, how everything's going, how was the party? And she's like, oh, it was great. She's like, actually, my friend does props. Um, they're looking for somebody if you ever, you know, are you interested? And I was like, it was such a random thing. Like, I didn't say I wanted to work props. I never said I wanted to work in the business. I just said acting and directing. And so I said, yes. So I took this meeting with this assistant and she said, well, um, we're looking for an intern. It's a three week shoot, uh, shoots here in San Diego. Um, if you're interested, here's the script. Um, the prop master wants you to read it three times. First time, just read through it. Second time, read through it and highlight everything that's a prop. And then on the third time, write down anything that you think would be needed by the prop department in a scene. And I was like, okay. And she's like, and can you have it by tomorrow? And so I did. So I read this three times. I made all my notes. I showed up at this hotel and it was like, had they had the whole floor, of the hotel, the whole production. It was like, you know, production office, art department, props, grip electric. I mean, it was just like chaos on this whole floor, like doors open, people screaming. <laughs> Like someone's throwing a script, quick, quick, get this out to the actor. And then the <laughs> Teamsters are arguing about stuff. And I was like, oh, I love it. I'm home, chaos, like controlled chaos. And so I met the prop master and he um, looked at my notebook and I tried to explain to him like what I did. He said, you know, you, your assistant said it. He's like, uh-huh. So he was like, did you really like read this three times? And I said, yeah, he goes, nobody's ever done it. I've had 50 interns over the last 30 years. Nobody's ever actually read it three times. No one's ever done this. So you got the job if you want it. He's like, technically it's not, a, I mean, it's a job, but you're not, we don't pay you. I'm like, of course. Yeah, yeah, no, I know it's an intern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So called my jobs and told them that I needed those three weeks off. And I had no idea I was gonna pay for anything. I didn't know anything. It was just like an opportunity. It was just like, I need to do this. And on the first day there was a strike. The Teamsters were striking. The, they were trying to go union as a big, huge thing. It was like in the early time of like the 90s when all these TV movies were trying to be flipped to go union. And so they had left LA to come to San Diego to do this movie, try to stay away from the Teamsters, but it didn't work. So uh, on day two, they signed, the, they signed the agreement and the assistant had to leave because she wasn't union. And so they brought in somebody else who then left a couple of days later to go do another movie. And all of a sudden I'm the guy on set doing everything. And so I went from an intern to uh, assistant props to assistant prop master. And by the end of the movie, the last week, it was just me from the prop department because the prop master left to do a movie. The onset dresser had to do something else. And so I was the only guy left doing every department, including firearms, which I of course was not licensed to do, <laughs> but he just handed it off. To, I mean, he gave me the proper training, but you know, they weren't actually loaded, but it was just still, it was a, still a real handgun sure. that was, I was dealing with on set as this 19 year old. Wow. And yeah. were you eventually then paid because you yes, yeah. on the, on day three, I got, I started getting paid oh, and good. so it all worked out and, um, you know, and it was, it was a, the best experience. I mean, I think that, you know, when I, people always ask me like, how, like how, what's the best way to get into the business? You know, how did you get in? And I, for me, either if you want to act or direct or write, especially if you want to write, you know, or, you know, even produce to do as many jobs as you can, because you can be on set and see how things get made. 
And, you know, I was just talking to a friend of mine who uh, just produced this movie and the writer, they kept saying, you know, we have 14 days to shoot this. It has to fit into 14 days. So limited locations. And they still were not able to do limited locations. And then the scenes always had like action and they're trying to do it. And, you know, you keep trying to make it smaller. Once you're on set, you realize, oh, this is why you can't do it more than 14. You know, this is the day you have these locations. If we move, get in a truck, everybody has to go park, park their trucks, unload the truck. You know, everything takes time. Once you're on set, you realize all those little, those little elements. And it helps, I think, every department, you know, up. And, um, but, uh, so when I'm being on set, it was great because I got to see what everybody's job was. And then because I worked my butt off, everybody wanted to help me. So by the end of the movie, I was able to go to everybody and say, hey, I want to move to L.A. So if you have anything as a PA or props or, you know, Teamster or driver or anything, let me know. And so I had all these people that said they were going to help me after the movie, of course, as people go not every single person helps me no but i had enough <laughs> i had enough people willing to take my call and um and help me get some some jobs so within within six months i was packing up my nissan Sentra and you know moving up to to do this movie for six weeks and i haven't i never came back so i may came back to visit but i packed up my stuff and you know moved up to la probably two months after that after the movie so did you move right to Hollywood or did you go to like North Hollywood where it was a little safer? Um, so when I first moved here, I, I moved into uh, Mar Vista area, uh, like just right outside of Santa Monica because the, after the end of that movie, I had no place to live. And cause I was staying, the irony is, is like, I had one friend in LA and she said I could stay at her place. So I came up here, I texted her, well, it was, Paged her. I paged yeah, I her. Say, you know, huh? Yeah, I left a message on her voicemail <laughs> and then paged her. When I got into town, she said they could stay here and then she never returned my call. Mm. So I showed up and I'm like sleeping in my car at the production office on the first day and they go, What are you doing? And I was like, Well, my friend, she didn't, you know. So I got to stay at the production co coordinator's house for the, the whole movie. But at the end of it, I needed a place to stay. So the medic on the job was like, Oh, I've got this extra room. My friend just moved out so you can, you know, rent my room. So I ended up moving there and was there for about six months and then got my own place in Los Feliz. I was there for probably five years and then moved to Mid Wilshire and then was there for a long time. And now I'm in the dreaded valley, as I thought. And now it's like I'm in heaven. <laughs> Toluca Lake, I'm in heaven. Oh, well, the Toluca Lake, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's a little the different valley than the valley. Yeah, yeah, exactly. it's valley, not, yeah. valley adjacent. No, I'm right, right. There you go. For valley real estate, light. Real estate purposes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs>